Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Cocoa Beach, that's actually not the open ocean, that's the Indian River, specifically the Banana River. And we are out here today, actually just got back from a dolphin cruise experience, which was amazing, and then ate at this awesome restaurant. However, today we've got an amazing show, specifically designed for beginners. How do record players operate? Check out this video, you're not gonna wanna miss this. Welcome to Recordology. If you are new to vinyl, or perhaps a curious person who's always wanted to know, you may find yourself asking yourself, how does a record player work? Well, that's what this video is all about. We are going to go over the basics of how various types of record players work, and along the way, maybe learn how to use some of their functions, which will hopefully enlighten you and enable you to better enjoy vinyl records. Now, for this video, I'm gonna be using two primary demonstrations unit demonstration units. On the right is the very, these are both very, very popular, probably the two most popular record players for beginners. On the right is the Audio-Technica LP60X. This is the Bluetooth variant, so it sends Bluetooth audio out. And on the left is the Crosley Cruiser. I think this is a third gen. So it's almost the newest, if not the newest version of the Cruiser. And I'm gonna show you how these work. If you are just new to this or you've always wondered, we're gonna talk about the entire process, how it works, why it works, all that good stuff. This is also a really good time to talk about the differences between a record player and a turntable, in my opinion. On the left, we have, again, the Crosley Cruiser suitcase record player. This is a record player. To me, a record player obviously plays records, but it's got built-in speakers. It's often portable, and sometimes it has a novelty aspect to it, like the suitcase design, the, the wrap that this one has, they come in different colors and styles. Sometimes the style is a wooden, kind of all-in-one center, so there's like a novelty aspect of it. But portability, built-in speakers, a self-contained unit, and an arguably lower quality, that to me is a record player. Now over on the right is the Audio-Technica LP60X. This is a turntable, and while at its core it does the same thing, it plays records, it does it better, it's designed to sound better, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a little bit, but it doesn't have built-in speakers, so you need to connect it to an external sound system. Some people buy these and don't realize at the time, hey, there's no speakers. No, there's not. For the most part, turntables require external audio equipment, so there's something you add to a sound system, they're not self-contained. That being said, let's go ahead and start at square one for many people, which is a suitcase player. Now I'm gonna say at the outset, there is not a lot of other YouTube channels out there, if any, that will look at a suitcase player like this Crosley Cruiser and say, that's fine, there's no problem with it, and I still think that's the case. If this is what you want, if this meets your needs, there's no problem. It's not gonna damage your records, that's misinformation. It is a good product, absolutely. Uh, but it's limited in its sound quality. It's not a super high fidelity piece of equipment. It is very much a beginner's product. But if it gets you started and interested in turntables and vinyl, then you know I think it's done its job. So yeah, this is uh, the, mo the first record player that many of us have these days. But it's also a really good way to talk about how records work. So I'm gonna use this as sort of an instructional tool as we talk about the principles of playing a record. Okay, now something that all turntables and record players do is they play records, but they do it in a very similar way and there's a lot of similarities between, you know, something like this that may cost, you know, $40, $50 or, you know, at a very high-end system that costs tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Every one of them is gonna have a platter, and the platter is this right here. It's what the record itself rests on, and you'll notice some are large, some are small. Typically, the larger ones are better, but the portables 
condense the size down by sort of miniaturizing things and the platter is one way that they do that. If you're playing a 12 inch record, a 7 inch record or even a 10 inch record, you can just place it right on the platter here. These rubber nubs right here will make contact just fine. It doesn't have a mat, a platter mat that goes on top of this. It doesn't really need one. There are a couple of odd units out there that have miniature platter mats, but for this level of equipment, people ask me often, they're like, well, should I add a platter mat to it? And the answer is no, it really wouldn't do anything for this level of equipment. It just doesn't need it. But at its heart, all the record players are gonna have a platter and the platter spins. There's an electric motor inside the record player or turntable and that will spin the platter. It's very important in the record playing process that this spins the record and you'll see why in a minute. Another common thing that you're gonna see in all of these is this thing on the right and this is called a tone arm and it's an arm because it articulates or moves like that and obviously what it's doing is it's moving over the top of the record and the reason why it does that is the music and the information or whatever was recorded on the record needs to be played back in such a fashion that the arm can move from the outside which is usually the beginning of a record to the inside which is usually the end of a record. So this pivots and moves accordingly and it also allows you to start the record wherever you want. If you wanna play the second, third, fourth, fifth song in any order you want or just let it play through, that works as well. Now a self-contained record player is also gonna have a volume control because like I said, we've got these speakers built in which are awfully handy. Although built-in speakers, usually not the best speakers. They've started coming out with some portable units lately that are fantastic. Like the Victrola Revolution Go is a absolutely fantastic portable turntable. It's more of a portable turntable than a record player. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out that review. We've reviewed these and hundreds of other record players and turntables as well. But with a portable, you're gonna have a volume control. Sometimes you're gonna have extra functionality like this one also has Bluetooth. So you can, on this one, send Bluetooth out from this record player to Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth speaker, and it also receives Bluetooth. So if you wanted to hook up your phone to it, you can listen to your phone if you're listening to like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, something like that. You can listen to that audio on these speakers as well. Again, not all units have that, but it's something to be aware of. There's also right down here, a switch to control the different speeds. And how do you know what speed to use? That's something we'll talk about in a minute. This one also has a feature called auto stop. And what it does is when you start playing the record and it gets to the end of the record, it'll stop automatically. It'll stop spinning the record. And the reason why that's good is as this is spinning and the needle or the stylus is what it's really called is spinning in that exact same spot at the end of the record over and over and over, that could conceivably over time wear down the stylus, could wear down the record. So it's ideal, like let's say you fell asleep while your record was playing or you left the room or you got tied up with something else. With the auto stop on, it would just automatically stop. So that could be a good thing. And that's why this one has that feature to allow you to do so. Another thing you're gonna find that record players have is a 45 adapter. A 45 adapter allows you to put this right on the middle here and play a record with a larger hole. Some records have a larger hole, some have a smaller hole. So depending on what hole your record has, you can play either type. And some of them like this allow you to store it right there. Back to some other terminology. This is called a spindle. And the spindle is basically this little piece that sticks out that the record rests on. So how does that electric motor spin the platter and why does it matter? So the most common way that that's done is via a belt. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and take this platter off. Usually there's a little clip right there. Um, it's missing off of this unit because I've used it to demonstrate before. So I'm just gonna lift this off. And again, if you have one of these, don't take your unit apart because you'll void your warranty and that's not a good thing. So what you have under here is some dust. This thing recently made the move from Colorado to Florida and apparently the box wasn't sealed tight because we picked up a lot of packing dust along the way. So I've just been kind of cleaning as I go. You'll have to forgive me for that. So it's a, it's a rubber belt 
It's essentially a rubber band, but never use a rubber band for a belt because a rubber band is spongy and this is rigid. Like it doesn't stretch that much. It's got very little stretch. It would just snap if I pulled on it hard. So if you were, if you need to buy a new belt, just buy a new belt. They make them for every record player, even vintage record players, and they're cheap, like $10 or less. And there's no reason not to just buy a belt. And don't worry about if you buy a new record player having to replace the belt all the time, you probably never will have to replace the belt. But if you're buying a vintage one and for whatever reason the belt has deteriorated or has broken, it's an easy, easy fix. So the basic premise here is you have an electric motor that turns this little brass spindle. It's a little motor mounted underneath there. The belt is attached to that and then the belt goes around the platter. The bottom of the platter has this ring here. This is called a sub platter. And literally it's just a protruding area that the belt goes around. So the belt goes around there and therefore the platter spins. Two things here I want to I want to bring up. So belt driven turntables are the cheapest to make because the motors are the cheapest types of motors. Also on higher end units, I'm talking like super expensive turntables. They also use belts because the belt being attached to the motor and the platter and the whole thing being separated via a rubber belt allows some sound isolation to occur. So if there's vibrations or movements or even sound coming from the motor spinning so fast, that gets absorbed, sort of like a shock absorber, in the belt itself and does not get translated to the platter. Now remember, the platter is going to have the record resting on top of it. So if it's vibrating, if it's got movements or a hum from the motor and you put the needle down on the record, that could be picked up as un unwanted noise. So that's why you sound isolation is a huge, huge thing. You want to keep the tone arm, and we'll talk about the cartridge here in a minute, you want to keep that separated from the platter. So a belt is also great for that. But they use it on these units because it's the least expensive way to spin a record player. And both units that we're going to be looking at today are actually belt driven. But I'm going to show you some other types as well. There's another one called direct drive where the platter itself is an electric motor or is connected to a motor. There's no belt involved. It's directly driving the platter. There's another style called rim drive and that's found on a lot of older portable units specifically. And a rim drive unit basically has a little wheel under the platter and that wheel is basically connected to a motor and or driven by a drive shaft which is in contact with a motor and therefore spins the inside of that platter. Okay, we've talked briefly about the tone arm. There's often a counterbalance back here. It's either spring loaded or just weighted and that's to make sure that the tone arm doesn't push down too much on the record itself, that it's not too heavy. So it counterbalances what's at this end of the tone arm, which is the cartridge. And then part of the cartridge is the stylus or needle, as it's commonly known. And like I said earlier, there's a big misconception that Crosley suitcase players and other suitcase players and entry level players will damage your vinyl. And that is happily misinformation. These do track heavier. These, these do, what these tone arms and these stylus do push down harder on your records than a higher end unit, but the records can withstand oftentimes more weight than you would think. In fact, if you have too little tracking force, that can oftentimes do more damage than too much. The reason why these types of players put more weight on is that the type of cartridge that they use requires it. So what is a cartridge? Let's remove this little stylus guard here, and I am going to Get a little bit closer here. This is not the cartridge that came with this unit. This is an upgraded unit, uh, but it still has the same basic principles and it's, wow, it's dusty too. But basically that oblong box that you see there, that black box hanging down with the white thing sticking out of it, that is a cartridge or a phono cartridge. And what it does is it's a transducer, meaning that it takes 
one type of energy and turns it into another type of energy. In the case of a cartridge, it takes mechanical information, which would be the coming from the stylus vibrating, those mechanical movements, and if you look in the back, you'll see wires sticking out. It turns it into electrical information that we will hear as sound later on. You'll see this metal bar protruding out of the bottom of the cartridge. And at the end of it, on the bottom, you will see a little reddish colored point sticking out. That reddish point is called a shank. You thought I was gonna say stylus or needle, didn't you? That's actually called a shank. And at the tip of the shank, very, very microscopically down there, is the stylus. It's usually just a chip, a tiny, tiny piece of either sapphire or diamond if it's a higher end one. This particular cartridge has two stylus. If I flip this white switch, it will rotate over and you can have two different types. That's a show for a different day. Uh, but basically, in principle, you need to know that the stylus or the needle at the bottom of the shank there, which is at the end of the cantilever, which goes into the cartridge, is picking up the vibrations, the left to right, up and down movements of the record groove, that mechanical information, and the cartridge turns it into an electrical impulse or series of impulses that we get to hear as sound once they are amplified. This is a ceramic cartridge. That's the type of cartridge interior material that is used. And you'll hear people say, well, it's a, it's a, you'll often hear people say about a, you'll often hear people say about a ceramic stylus, thinking that the actual point that is riding through the groove is a jagged piece of pottery. Thankfully, that's not the case. They're talking about the internal, I should say they're mis- they're actually, ceramic actually refers to the internal components of the, ceramic actually refers to the internal components of the cartridge itself. It works similar to a quartz watch where an amount of pressure is applied to a rod of lab created ceramic and that lab created ceramic then exudes an electrical impulse and basically forms the functional basis for the cartridge. There are higher end types that we'll talk about later on, but these entry level units all use ceramic cartridges. The reason why they use ceramic cartridges is twofold. A, they're very cheap to produce and cost is a very important element for beginner record players because these are sold as impulse buys in most cases. Most people that buy these weren't planning on buying a record player that day. They happen to walk into Walmart, into Kohl's or wherever, Urban Outfitters, and they're like, hey, record player, that'd be fun. So they don't know the difference of higher end components, so they're not going to be looking. If you were to put on here, this has a higher end moving magnetic cartridge, a diamond stylus, that person in that moment wouldn't know what that means, they wouldn't care, and it wouldn't be important to them in that moment. So it's actually brilliant how these things are marketed and sold because they give you a functional introduction to the principles of playing a record. Then if you're intrigued and you wanna learn more, you can further invest and you can further learn. So yeah, basically they use it because it's cheap, but they also use it because it precludes the unit from requiring a preamp circuit. And we'll get to a preamp in another turntable here in a minute. But essentially the audio coming out of a ceramic cartridge is line level and why is that important because it can be a, it could, the audio can be sent directly to the speakers with a basic amplifier or it can be connected to other audio equipment with a line output on the back with no internal amplification whatsoever and behold the lp60x this is the bluetooth variant so it sends bluetooth audio this is my number one recommended turntable for beginners this is what I always recommend. It is, even though the costs are higher now than they were a couple of years ago, this thing used to be $119 new, or at least the basic one without the Bluetooth. Even though it's now over $200, this is still the best entry level turntable. You may say 200 bucks is a lot of money. Keep an eye out. I bought this one used for 40 bucks at a garage sale. Okay, it can happen. So remember how that had a, had a like a lid 
that you just kind of open it and then you play your record. A turntable will often have what's called a dust cover, which is a lid, but it's notice how it's much bigger. You can actually close this while the record is spinning or when it's not in use like now. And that's beneficial because it allows you to keep dust. You notice all that dust that I kept running into? It keeps dust from building up on things. You don't want dust on your records because if dust gets into the groove of a record, and that needle is riding in that groove and it picks up that dust, that's what you're gonna hear is crackle and static and popping. Some people consider that a charming aspect of vinyl. And even clean old records will crackle because the vinyl degrades over time. But if you don't want a noisy vinyl experience, keep those records free of dirt and debris. By the way, check out our many, many videos on cleaning supplies and cleaning accessories for cleaning the grooves, cleaning the record players, separate show for a separate day. But know that keeping dust off of your record player and records is a good thing. There's also a whole sidetrack about sonically what sounds better, the dust cover open or close. We're not gonna get into that today. But yeah, um, and let's take a step back and talk about that record. This is a seven inch record with a large hole. This is what in America, in the United States, we would recognize as a 45 RPM record. And that even says 45 RPM on there. Most every record player will have two speeds of 45 and 33, like this one. Some suitcase players like that often have a third speed for 78s, and you can play with the right needle. That's why I upgraded it. You can play 78 RPM shellac records, the old-fashioned ones. But most people are going to be looking to be playing either 45 or 33 RPM records, and those are the two common speeds. In the UK, and there's variants of everything. So there's large records that are 45, there's large records that are 33. There's small records that are 45 like this. There's small records that are 33. After a while, you can kind of get the idea pretty easily. Like, okay, I'm expecting this to be 45 RPM. And sometimes they even put right on there, 45 RPM. The basic premise is that there's one concentric groove. There's not multiple grooves. So it starts on the outside and basically spirals. Spirals, spirals, spirals until it gets to the inside. Never touch the vinyl surface. Nothing is gonna go crazy if you do, but fingerprints get sticky and those sticky oils attract dust and then you have to clean it and stuff. So holding from the inside edge and the outside edge is the best way to handle a record. And again, we need a 45 adapter. I don't have one on hand. However, I know where to get one. Have you ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below. Okay, now I've got one. And congratulations, by the way, to the viewer who won one of the, if not the, very last purple exclusive limited edition adapters. If you wanna win stuff, we give away stuff all the time. Record players, turntables, you name it. You've gotta be joining those lives when we go live because that's when we do it in most cases. And we just love to hang out and chat with you as well. So anyway, if I wanna play this record, I need to put a 45 adapter on and then I can place the record on. Now you may be saying to yourself, wow, that platter is a lot bigger than the one we looked at before. Why? Well, on a higher end turntable, you will find that the platter is larger because it supports the whole surface of a record. That's a 12 inch platter. So if I put on a 12 inch LP or a 12 inch record, which is the same thing, just different terminology, it will support the record and that's better than those rubber nubs. It gives it a better support. And then this is a layer that goes on top and it's removable. This is called a platter mat. And oftentimes turntables come with this kind of material. This is felt, it's soft, it's absorbative of those vibrations. It's also cheaper to make, et cetera, et cetera. You can take this off and upgrade this to different materials. Again, other shows we've done on that as well, but that's why the platter is better. So even though we're playing a smaller record, in this case, it's a great, nice surface for that record. Now let's look at what we've learned so far. We've got the platter, we've got the tone arm, and we've got different switches and buttons. But as you can see, the basic functionality is still there. And this record player happens to be an automatic. So remember last time how we had to lift up the tone arm and place it where we wanted to, and then it had the auto stop 
but you know we still had to bring the tone arm back. This one is fully automatic. We can play a record with the push of a button, and I love, love, love these. So because of that functionality, this one has some different controls. It's got this switch here to tell it how big the record is. That way it knows where to start playing it. It's got this speed switch over here for 33 or 45, and like we said, this is 45. And then it's got a start and stop switch as well as a cueing lever. So I can just hit start, it'll spin the record up to the right speed, it will lift up the tone arm, it'll move it over, and it'll ever so gently start playing that record. And if I had it connected to speakers, we'd be listening to the glorious sounds of Elvis Presley right now. That will play all the way to the end, and it will bring the tone arm home, or we can just hit stop at any time, and it will do the same thing as well. Remember what I was saying about protecting that record surface and that stylus from spinning unnecessarily. This takes it even a step further. Not only does it stop playing at the end of the record, it brings the tone arm all the way home. Now, as you saw me do a minute ago, I can still manually play a record. So an automatic will give you that functionality too if you wanna manually cue it up and play any song in order. Or you can use the automatic functionality, which is absolutely cool. Now, let's look at a larger record on this same record player. So as you can see, each record player may be a little bit different, but the same functionality is there. I also wanted to point out under the platter mat, this is a belt-driven turntable as well. And if we rotate this around here, you'll see a very similar spindle with a rubber belt right there that goes underneath this platter as well. So it's very similar, although you'll notice the motor is over there instead of over here. Higher end turntables put the motor on the opposite side as the cartridge to kind of, again, help with that isolation. So let's go ahead and put a 12 inch record onto this turntable right here. To play it now, since we were on seven inch before we switch it to 12 inch, this is a 33 RPM record. And we flip the switch to the correct speed and now, same thing, we can hit start. It's sort of hypnotizing with this clear record. It's a gorgeous Frank Sinatra record, but the, uh, the, the, the lines are kind of trippy to look at. And, but it knows to put the stylus at the beginning of the record out here now. How does it know that? Well, when I selected the record size, it knows that it's a 12 inch record. So it will you know, do what it needs to do. Now, you remember I said there's a cueing switch? Some turntables have a lever like that portable did back here. This one has a switch. So if I push that, it simply lifts the stylus and that way we can go to any song we want in any order we want. Again, you have the full control of a manual as well as an automatic. And what happens when it gets to the end of the record? We already talked about it, but let's witness it together. It will go into the center part, that kind of clear ring in the middle, that's called a run out. And the record player will know that the record is over and it will bring the tone arm home and we will be able to either play another record or maybe listen to this one again if that's what we so desire. Okay, and the song is over. It goes to the center, it realizes the record is over lifts the tone arm and brings it home and it even stops spinning the record for you so when you wake up again you're like oh i fell asleep listening to sinatra again it was another good night now back to cartridges on higher end record players they often use another technology called moving magnetic so instead of ceramic what's inside that aluminum cartridge body is a magnet that moves back and forth between two coils and that movement does the same thing. It's still a transducer. It takes the mechanical information from the vibrating stylus in the groove and turns it into sound and sends it through wires down the tone arm to the back of the unit. These sound much better than a ceramic cartridge. This is an entry-level Audio-Technica 3600L cartridge that is found on a lot of entry-level and even mid-range turntables. It is fantastic. You'll notice the cantilever down there is black. That's because it uses a carbon fiber one. And the whole white area comes off. That's the stylus housing that can be replaced 
very easily. It can be upgraded to, but this is how these work. Let's take a look at the back now and see what a turntable or a record player will do with those impulses that are being sent into those wires in the tone arm. So we've got both the turntable and the record player here. The record player on top has the RCA output jacks as well as an aux in. We didn't talk about that. It's another feature that unit has. The one on the bottom has an output that's an eighth inch and they both do the same thing. They send audio out if you want to connect them to speakers. Well, with the case of the turntable, you have to connect it to speakers. But in the case of the record player, that is an option. You will see down here on the back of a modern turntable, something called a preamp switch. It's often labeled as phono or line. Remember how I talked about line level coming out of that ceramic cartridge and not requiring a preamp? Well, when you have a magnetic cartridge, it requires an extra amplifier and that's called a preamp. You can defeat that if you wanted to use an external one. So if you wanted to upgrade and use an external preamp, that would be fine. People sell those. Some people swear by them. Some people think they're unnecessary, but oftentimes you will have a switch where you can just have it use the built-in preamp and thereby sending the audio out at a line level so it's ready just like the audio in this unit would be ready. So there is a circuit board that usually lives in the back of the record player or the turntable. I should say the record player or the turntable. And that circuit board will include a number of things. There'll be capacitors and amplifiers and all of that stuff to allow it to send audio out to the audio system. You will also notice that this is a 12 volt power supply. Most often modern turntables require 12 volt power supplies, which they come with, whereas suitcase players only require five volts. Something to be aware of. It's also probably a good idea to talk about skipping records, and I've done videos on this before. Make sure that your speakers on a nice high-end system aren't on the same surface as the turntable. Make sure that people aren't pounding around when the record is playing. And then also check the lift shelf. This is my number one fix, and this gets rid of about 90% of skipping records. If your record player or turntable has the ability to lift the tone arm either with a switch like this or that button that we saw on the other one, make sure that when you, when you lower it, that this is down all the way. This is called a lift shelf. Oftentimes what happens is this gets hung up and it'll be a little bit too high, causing the stylus not to rest its full weight on the record that results in skip. So just gently push that lift shelf down and that my friend will eliminate, like I said, most problems with skipping records. But that's it. Those are the basic functions of how a record player works and a turntable. And from this, you can dive in and learn a lot more detail, a lot more granularity on both types and a lot of extra products as well. But if I haven't said it yet or nobody has said it yet to you, welcome to the hobby of vinyl records. And if you haven't done so already, definitely hit the subscribe button and join us as we learn and explore more in this wonderful world of records. That's gonna do it for today. So I'm gonna throw my back out. It kinda hurts. Thanks for watching. Happy record hunting. See you next time. Ow.